it's a dilemma that we all face is if you can't be the one watch guy, <laughs> could you be the two watch yeah. guy? <laughs> I think the problem is it always grows, doesn't it? It always goes as in. Could you ever be a two watch guy? Can I ever? Be? I think we all could be. I think, you know, look, it's, it's luxury, isn't it? It's not something you need. But, you know, if someone said to me, Pete, you, you're going to lose all the other watches and these are the just your own. I mean, I, I am still mesmerized by the fact I own these two watches. I'm, I'm still like, that's not really real. I'm a sports commentator, so um, mostly tennis. My background was I played a lot of junior tennis. I coached a lot. I worked for pretty much every network. I'm a freelancer, so I, I do BBC for Wimbledon and um, yeah, pretty much every sports channel going I've, I've worked for. But um, very lucky to do that job. Um, it's not as glamorous as it sounds. The hours. Are, <laughs> so you're sat in a cubicle, at small the moment, cubicle with a small mic. Small cubicle in London, but don't 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 complain if you hear that <laughs> because we're supposed to give the feeling that we're there. And and a lot of the time we used to be there, but due to COVID, we've we've um, we've stayed in London. But naturally, just always like watches. My earliest memories were. Um, getting a feeler watch, the sports back, because yeah. I did a, played a lot of tennis and whatnot, yeah. and just for some reason being obsessed with it, and I think I remember I lost it on the beach somewhere, and it was like the worst day of my life, and parents searched for it everywhere. So somewhere in France on a beach, there someone will find a feeler watch that will mean so much to me, but, and then actually um, didn't have a lot of money, my, my parents didn't, but I remember them buying me uh, for Christmas and birthday joint, the cheapest tag watch ever, but I was only about 13, so to have a tag was bonkers. Yeah, huge. And it, I remember it was £175 because it had been, it was discontinued, it was a little F1 job and I loved that tag. It, it stayed on me for years and years and years and I literally had it everywhere. And I think that's why with watches, they become part of your skin. They become part of you. Like, I don't think there'll be a photo of me for about maybe a decade and a half without that tag watch on me. And I've always dreamt of being able to just have two watches. I started thinking, uh, you've got the perfect, or very close to the perfect to watch collection. With Audemars Piguet, as, as everyone knows, what an amazing brand. And again, they're, in, they're their own brand. And I, I actually, when AP House opened, um, they released Code 1159. And obviously, as you know, online, it was getting a bit of abuse and whatnot. And again, I always think, go in and see something for yourself particularly when it's from a house like a Audemars Piguet. I couldn't imagine that they would have done something poorly or... But I also like the fact that, like even with F.P. Jean doing the Quartz Watch and making it then for men, as in doing something different. And they took a gamble. They did something different with the Code 1159. So I was really intrigued by it. The reason with the 15202 is that is the original left field watch. Okay, that the whole point of that watch was uh, Gerald, you know, Gerald Genta got commissioned, everyone knows the story now, got commissioned to make it, but, you know, the back then, sports watch. it was the original, the original sports watch, watch. Yeah. and luxury sports watches, mm -hmm. and, you know, back then it was gold and, you know, leather, and, and Quartz was killing the watch industry as well, and so to have an automatic steel, steel luxury sports was bonkers. And then for to, mad money. For mad money, and then to, to produce what it looks like as well, you know, based on a helmet yeah. of a, and, and so it's the original left field, um, a brand taking a huge risk, doing something different, and but executing it to perfection. And then, and then, what, what about um, what about this this guy, the the the, the Jean here? So, as I said to you, um, you know, this is all or, you know when you talk about Grail watches. But I'd ever since I discovered Jean, and that was a long time ago before he was because we've had this conversation before. You could go into William and Son and try just, on the Jean and, and look at the window. They were in the window. They were all there. There was the Debethune there. There was the yeah. little ferries in the window. Yeah. They were all there. I mean, so yeah, so this guy. Um, so the story behind this was I, I then always wanted to own an automatic Jean. I, I thought that was another tier uh, uh, in terms of, and I do think he's so unique because. Not only is he an incredible horologist in terms of we talked about what he did with the Elegant, but with this, I mean, this is a 160 hour power reserve. I mean, that's, that's a week you can leave on this. I mean, that's insane. The movement is all gold. The, the, there's, a, there's a ceramic um, ball bearing. So if you just do that, look how much it moves. Okay, and that's what winds it so much, which keeps it. I mean, and so it feels like when you wear it, it feels like you, 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 your wrist is a, a helicopter sometimes. So it's even more luxurious. It's like I own a helicopter on my wrist. Yeah. But, um, but no, I mean, everything about it, fortunately in, in Paris, um, I actually initially was after the Octoloon. Um, which is 142? 
which was it was 40 or 42 but yeah. with my skinny wrist so I wrote to a few boutiques um, Paris boutique was kind enough to respond and he said oh look yeah we've got a 42 um, salmon dial I mean although it's red gold technically but um, and so he said yeah you know um, come in I'll hold it for you because I was I do the French Open every year with my job so I was like oh my god wow yeah 100% going there and I then actually as you were there as I was there I saw the Divine and the Divine hadn't been something I'd thought much about but and I actually thought, wow, that's loads nicer than what I thought online. That's, that's, and it's really quirky. The seconds dial, it's really, diff, you know, it's even more quirky as in, you know, even the numbers slightly smaller here. And I thought, wow, that's such an incredible watch. But it was more the numbers that I kind of was mesmerized by. And because I just thought, again, it's something different, it's something that you just don't see. I went away and then messaged him and said, oh, any chance you've got any Davines? Mm. And again, it was a similar story to the Elegant. And he said, well, actually, yeah, as in, got this one. And it's, this is a 40. He said it's, it's even more different because you're supposed to have the so the silver dial or the grey dial, which is actually white gold, um, you know, made. Which again, it's everything to do with Jean. Anything you look at on it, it's just there's something amazing about it. Like yeah, that's not just a grey dial, that's white gold. <laughs> yeah. Like um, and then you've got the steel high polished there. But so that the the, the grey dial is meant to be with the platinum. Um, and he said, look. Sometimes they have a client who comes in and asks for it the other way around. And, and obviously if it, if it was a, a salmon dial or the red gold, it's meant to go with the, the red, rose gold. So this is a, an, a flip. Yeah. Um, so it's even more unique. And so I then compared and contrasted. And to be honest, I've always wanted to own a, a salmon dial. And so I was sort of, oh, do I want that one? And I ended up, uh, I, I was really torn. It was really, <laughs> really I, literally every morning I was coming How in, going out. That? I was there, it was 14 days, and I probably spent 10 days going back and forth. Just eventually I did decide on the Divine, and, and I think it, the reason I decided on it was, is the, the second hands. I, I just think, and again, they're individually printed. But the other thing with his watches that I think are, and, and also the, I think I love the fact that it, it is a slight freak. It is slightly different, you know? And so I actually asked, um, you know, how many have been produced this way round? And he said in 2019, four that way so you know whenever you get your hands on a journal you know it's incredibly unique so anyway fun. and I, I can't see you know how incredibly lucky I am to, to own um, and and you know I've always said these will be handed down yeah. as in um, it could because what I look I know what money money is as in I don't have that much of it believe it or not with these as in you know I'm sure probably if I told my my mum or dad how much these were worth <laughs> on the secondary market or whatever they would be like you need to buy a house, as in, <laughs> but as in, yeah. um, but there are more important things. There are more important things, and who, who, what's that's art? Is in who got the chance to own something like this? And I know I'm one of very, very few people in the world, and this is a this is the watch that changed the watch industry, and and this is a watch that you know four people have, and it's from, it is from a modern day Picasso, artist, horologist, and so. Who can own those? That's like, one of the coolest you know? things. I totally agree. I totally agree that it is art. It's it's living art that mm. you can enjoy, and um, you know there there are so few things in life that you can connect with in that way. 